Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade functional equation. I call this homemade because I came up with the idea and maybe one day I can tell you about the process because you can also come up with questions like these. So we have a function f that is given by this equation f of x plus 1 minus x times f of the quantity 8x minus 20 all over 3x minus 7 equals f of the quantity 10x minus 18 all over 3x minus 5. So our goal is to find f of 4, even though it wasn't mentioned in the title. You know, that's what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve for f of 4 in this very messy equation. By the way, it's possible. All right, to be able to find f of 4, first of all, think about what you would do first and then write it down and then let us know in the comment section down below. So if I saw a problem like this and they were asking for f of 4, my first reaction would be replacing x with 3 because that would give me f of 4. I don't really care about the other things. I'll take care of those later, but that will be my initial reaction. Did you think the same thing? Let us know. So replace x with 3. Okay. And when you do, you're going to get the following. You're going to get f of 4 minus 3 times f of... Now, this is going to give you some messy expression, right? So before we write it in there, let's go ahead and evaluate it. Maybe we can even do it mentally because this problem was designed in such a way that the solution will be somewhat nice. Okay, so now if I replace x with 3, this gives me 8 times 3 minus 20, which is 24 minus 20. So that gives me a 4 in the numerator. And the denominator, that gives me 3 times 3 minus 7, which is 9 minus 7. That's going to be a 2 in the denominator. So 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So this is just going to give me 3 times f of 2. See, that was simple, right? Now we're going to keep doing this. Replace x with 3 again. And don't lose sight of the fact that you have to use the same x value everywhere. Okay? It has to be consistent. If you replace x with 3 here and here. 10 times 3 is 30, 30 minus 18 is 12, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 5 is equal to 4, 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. Uh-huh, that gives us f of 3. Nice, but not so nice because I don't know f of 2, neither do I know f of 3. How am I going to find f of 4? There are three unknowns. Here's the trick. Since you do need to know f of 2 and f of 3, why don't you try to find it from here? That's the trick to solving this problem. But wait a minute, we're not done yet. So now let's go ahead and replace x with something such that x plus 1 magically or maybe mathematically turns into 2. And you can actually find it by setting x plus 1 equal to 2. That tells you, okay, if you replace x with 1, you're going to get what you want. So the next step is replacing x with 1 everywhere again. I keep repeating, you have to do it everywhere. If you replace x with 1, you get f of 2 minus 1 times f of, let's find out. That should be kind of easy. 8 times 1, maybe I should erase and start over. This is going to be 8 times 1 minus 20. That is a negative 12. And then 3 times 1 minus 7. That is a negative 4. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3. How nice, right? Okay. And then some people are going to be like, oh, this problem was contrived. Of course, all competition problems are. Too bad if you, don't, if you don't like it. Now, replace x with 1 again. 10 minus 18 is negative 8. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is 4. So this gives us f of 4. How convenient, right? And what about the next step? Now, you have two equations and three unknowns, so you do need another equation. And that equation, guess what needs to be? We have f of 3 in two of these equations, so we're going to replace now x with 2 because to get f of 3 first, and I'm saying first because we got f of 4 and f of 2, now is the time to start with f of 3. So you have to set this equal to 3, which is x plus 1 equals 3, and that tells you you must now replace x with 2 everywhere. Yes, let's do it. Great. Let's clean this up one more time so we can, you know, start fresh. Now, x is going to be 2 everywhere. This is going to give us f of 3, like expected, minus 
2 times because that's x, f of, what do you expect to get here, right? Let's see. If x is equal to 2, this is going to be 16 minus 20, which is negative 4. This is going to be 6 minus 7, which is negative 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 is positive 4, so it gives you f of 4. And on the right-hand side, you probably know what this is going to look like, but let's still do it. We're going to replace x with what? 1, right? So this is going to be 10 minus 18, which is negative 8. And then 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is equal to positive 4. How come? Uh-oh, that's not good. Well, am I? Okay, never mind. I'm replacing x with 2, right? So let's make sure we do the right thing. Okay, that's not right because I did it with uh, another number, 1 again. So we're going to replace x with 2 and x with 2. So that's going to give us 20 minus 18, which is 2. And then 6 minus 5, which is 1. So we should get f of 2 from here. Uh-oh. How did this work out? Again, uh, maybe later on I'll tell you all about it. There's a way to rearrange these numbers so that it works nicely. Let me, let me go ahead and erase these things and bring these kind of closer. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here because that's a really nice system of equations. Hopefully you'll agree with with me on that so I'm going to bring this closer and this one as well let's go ahead and bring this closer as well and take a good look at these equations we have a system of three equations three unknowns and the unknowns are f of 2 f of 3 and f of 4 exactly and what are you looking for f of 4 so if you go ahead and try to eliminate the other ones then we should get the answer so how do you get to f of 4. In other words, how do you eliminate f of 2 and f of 3? That's going to be our goal, okay? Eliminate f of 2 and f of 3 from these equations. You can also use substitution, by the way, which is going to work fine. I mean, you can do that as well. Maybe we should go with it. I don't know. Elimination usually seems easier, but substitution should work as well. In order to eliminate f of 2 and f of 3, I think we should try to write them all in terms of f of 4 right? So that we can kind of put it all together. And to be able to do that, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate maybe one of them. How about this? Since both of these have f of 4, we might probably just add these two equations, don't you think? Let's go ahead and move this away because we're not going to need it for now. And then let's go ahead and work on these two equations. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add side by side and that should actually do the trick because f of 4s will be on different sides, therefore canceling out. Now we're going to get the following. f of 2 minus 4 f of 3 is equal to f of 3. And this is kind of nice because it gives me f of 2 in terms of f of 3, which is 5 times f of 3. This is something that I can definitely use in these equations to simplify. But here's the thing. I know f of 2 in terms of f of 3, so why not plug it into one of these equations. So we have a couple different choices here. We can go ahead and substitute uh, f of 2, replace it with 5 f of 3, so we can find f of 4 in terms of f of 3 or otherwise, or we can just plug it into both of these equations and just try to solve for f of 4 from there, right? We could also do this. Get, actually, I don't think that's gonna work though. I was thinking about isolating f of 4 and setting them equal to each other, but guess what? It's going to give us the exact same thing that we received by canceling out the f of 4 from these two equations. So we must use the third one somehow. And let's see how we can do that. Now I can go ahead and replace f of 2 with one of these. So let's go ahead and take the first equation. f of 4 minus 3 f of 2 is equal to f of 3. And now let's go ahead and replace f of 2 with this. So f of 4 minus 3 times f of 2, which is 5 f of 3. There we go. f of 3 equals f of 3. Now from here, we get minus 15 plus 1. We get f of 4 equals 16 f of 3. Awesome. Looks like we were able to write everything in terms of f of 3, which is something we should be able to use in the third equation. Okay? So now we can go ahead and Replace f of 2 with 5 f of 3. And replace f of 4 with 16 f of 3. And we'll find f of 3 from here. If you don't want to do that, you can write f of 3 in terms of f of 4. 
and then also in terms of f of 2, but that's not, that's no big deal. So from here we get the following, f of 3 minus 2 times 16, 32, f of 3, which is negative 31, f of 3 equals 5, f of 3. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. This tells me that f of 3 is 0. And guess what? If f of 3 is 0, f of 4 is also 0. Are all the values equal to 0? That would be an interesting thing, which is something that I didn't actually check. But can they all be 0? That's a possibility. If we have a constant function, obviously the constant function is a solution because 0 minus 0 is equal to 0. But I was hoping for a more elegant a nicer solution from this equation. But here's the thing. If you go out and work with a, a system of three equations and try to maybe use elimination instead, would you be getting the same answer? That's for you to find out. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.